something pretty special. From basketball Let's go. to rock climbing. But it's fun, you get exercise for your arms, your legs, everything. Having a disability does not mean you can't accomplish your dreams. It makes me feel a few kind hearts and open minds can open up a world of opportunities to those with disabilities in their families. In the morning, they tell us how much fun they had and the movies they watched and the other kids they played with, so they have a really good time. Just turn on your TV and you'll see we're all more alike than different. We are just like anybody else. I'm Shannon Ogden. In the studio to guide you through the next 30 minutes are my partners in crime, Hannah Atkinson and Connor Long. Thanks, Shannon. During the holidays, we all enjoy spending time with our families. This holiday season, the Family Theatre Company is breaking new ground with a holiday classic, Tiny Tim's Christmas Carol. I got a chance to hang out at the rehearsal. On this night, we find Connor in a theater seat at the Auraria campus's King Center. The sound of Christmas carols filling the air. And we're off to a pretty good start. You've met our friends. Clutching us! I grew up having plenty of hope. And to whom, may I ask, will you refer it? This is all part of the family theater's rehearsal for Tiny Tim's Christmas Carol. Yeah. And by the way, that is family with a PH. It once stood for Physically Handicapped Actors and Musical Artists League. Have you seen your Uncle Scrooge around? Not today, thank goodness. It's one of those things where you sit and you go, as a director, how can I make any individual actor shine? Ah, oh director Paul Dwyer has been a part of the Denver theater scene for decades, but this is just his second show with family. Christmas has done me good. There are different... Um, challenges with the actors. I mean, sometimes it's very easy to see if an actor physically can't walk, if an actor can't be able to stand. But many challenges these actors face aren't always noticeable at first. And when I sit in left, I eat the pies. I came to family uh, in 2009. I'm, I'm a disabled veteran. Remember me! <laughs> Larice Quinn is playing five roles in this production, including the ghost of Jacob Marley. In life, I was your partner. Jacob Moss. What do you bring to the role that other performers may not? Perhaps maybe my ability to change accents, change dialects. Hot pies! I'm Stevens by three spirits. That's excellent. Larice wears a brace due to a degenerative joint disease and sometimes wears sunglasses for performances under the lights. Remember me! All right! I may have to wear sunglasses that day because I may have seizure activity. The third at three! Oh! For Loris, acting has become her savior after leaving the military. But when you find out that you can't do what you did, sometimes you lose a sense of self. And I discovered a bigger sense of self when I discovered this company. Why do any of us need hope in life, Ebenezer Scrooge? Finding that sense of self is at the heart of Tiny Tim's message. A message of hope and belief in that you can do anything you set your mind to. I'm back. It's also just fun to be part of... Ebenezer Scrooge! <gasps> what do you hope audiences will take away from this production of Tiny Tim? Where will I walk to? I want them to enjoy it. I want them to have a good time. Please to put a penny in the old man's hat. No. <laughs> Making adjustments for actors who have physical challenges doesn't take much work. In fact, it is something that most theater companies could do. Vicky Nunton is the artistic director for Family Theater. She is the first person in a wheelchair to head a major theater company. She says the adjustments needed are simple. In the rehearsal process, sometimes we'll just give a little longer break, you know, sometimes breaks in the rest of the theater world are just five or ten minutes. We might add a couple minutes on just so that people have time to, you know, go to the bathroom or do whatever they need to do. Um, in terms of wardrobe, it's often like designing a costume so that you're not using a bunch of complicated buttons. In terms of the set, often like if we have somebody who uh, has a, a visual impairment, there will be tracks or something along the 
floor some textured paint so that they can feel with their feet or with a cane where they're going and they can find their own way across the stage. Groups like Family often get started by someone having an idea to help one person. That idea then ends up helping many others. The Healthy Me project started just like that. I've been going to classes since it started. And got Shannon to join a class with me. Ten drum jacks and go. This is the one and only Healthy Me Project, a fitness program exclusively for adults with developmental disabilities. So right arm behind the head, grab your elbow. Four years ago, founder Roberta Hughes, a fitness trainer, was asked to help a young woman named Brianna lose weight. Brianna has Down syndrome and was severely obese. I was actually afraid to work with somebody with a disability because I didn't feel like I knew a lot about her and I was worried about hurting her or not doing things correctly. Over the course of two, sometimes frustrating years, Hughes figured out what worked and didn't work for Brianna. The result? Brianna lost 108 pounds and Hughes inadvertently discovered some effective fitness practices that she decided to open up to all adults with developmental disabilities. Sometimes our athletes will lose weight, sometimes they will just gain strength. Um, sometimes they gain social skills like confidence and the ability to just walk through the door and feel like they belong here. The program, which 22 people have now participated in, consists of a group workout each Saturday and weekly one-on-one -on -one sessions with a personal trainer. Athletes are also paired with a mentor who helps with things like nutrition education. Denver 7 contributor Hannah Atkinson has been in Healthy Me since the very first class in 2014. I gained um, tons of strength and in, um, independence as well and we all know um, good nutrition by the um, Roberto Hughes as well and that um, leads me to um, great opportunities like for instance we put him with you. <laughs> well. You've got to be in good shape <laughs> to keep up with me. <laughs> There is apparently a big need for a program like this. An estimated 78% of adult men with Down syndrome are overweight and 93% of adult women. Pause at the bottom, two count up. Ready. And again, down. Katrina Klotzbach is one of the 15 in this current session. Her mom, Renee, is interpreting. So what changes have you made in your lifestyle, Katrina? I eat less food. Not the fruit and vegetables. More fruit and vegetables. So what's your proudest, um, proudest moment, Katrina, through the Healthy Me project? She, lo she lost about 10 pounds. It costs $100 a month to join. Hughes says it makes no money, but it seems everyone here is richer because of it. Good job. The Healthy Me project was just awarded a $10,000 grant, which will be used in part to try to expand. Hughes says it's easy to envision Healthy Me in all 50 states. But for now, the focus is on those working out today, working to improve their lives, working for that next high five. My goodness, Always a pleasure, Nick. We've still got a lot more to show you. Here's Shannon with a preview. Up next, we're heading to the UNC campus in Greeley to show you a new program on campus that is including students who may have been left out before. Also, we're hitting the lanes with dozens of pint-sized bowlers with big hopes for their final scores. So how many strikes have you been getting a lot? Mm, ten. Ten? Well, you must be able to go bowl them. And later, we're heading to the set of ABC's hit show, Speechless. That's the finger. Work in progress. Where the serious topic of cerebral palsy is also part of the punchline. I think that's changing the way people interact in their own minds with disability, and that is, can only be a good thing. 